Surprise, surprise! Space Tomato is back a week early with Star Citizen Retrospective. I'd like to proudly announce that we're going to switch from a bi-weekly show to a weekly show, because really, I can't get enough Space Tomato, can you? Before we get started this week, I'd like to explain a little bit about what this show is to the newcomers. Basically, I look back at a year ago what was going on in Star Citizen and compare it to the progress we've made on those same topics today and in the time since then. Because there's really a lot going on and it's easy to forget some of that stuff. So I'm just trying to keep people reminded of what's going on and how it's been going on. This week we've got turret talk, we've got Hurston atmosphere talk and how it feels to be there, and we've got RSI Apollo talk with the new ship shape. Let's jump right in. Calling All Pappies, this week's first segment is going to be a special episode of Calling All Devs with Star Citizen Live game director Todd Pappy. The first question that Todd got to answer was, will a solo player with high quality NPC crew be able to compete with a skilled player crew given all other conditions are equal? Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys right now that we don't have NPC crews in game, but for the sake of information I'll go ahead and give you his answer. He said that yes. At the time, NPC gunners could hit at about a 95% rate, and they're building these skilled NPCs for specific jobs like repair. Just keep in mind that an NPC is not going to have that same problem solving ability as a human. They're very systematic. So take that all with a grain of salt. It could be just as good as having a human crew, but it won't be the same. The next question for Todd was, will we have props like a grapple or a jetpack to move through rough terrain? He said that they are going to try and use the EVA jets to help you get around a little bit of rough terrain here with an extra boost to your jump here or maybe uh, a dash or a dodge there. But nothing crackdown level style, no massive jumps, no huge jetpacks. They haven't talked about that yet, which is fine by us because we haven't seen anything that has to do with EVA jets and rough terrain. So no work has been done on that in the last year. Now this next question is an interesting one. What is the status of moving ships from 100% death to rendering ships inoperable? Basically just taking damage in certain places rather than just blowing up our ships when they get shot enough. Now listen to this answer. First, Todd mentioned that the team was working on misfires and wear and tear. Now we see that in 3.6 that's currently being implemented in the game. Kudos to them for that one. He also talked about getting the physical entities of those components into the ship, something I mentioned last episode we were kind of expecting towards the beginning of this year. He said that the US and the EU team were working on those, quote, in a little bit. Now once that's complete, we'll have the external object containers of the ships communicating with the internal object containers, allowing for these partial damages to take place. This means that damaging a ship enough from the outside can do damage to the gravity generators, the power systems, the shield generators, the life support systems. Any internal components can be damaged from the outside. This is going to be very important when it comes to boarding ships and disabling ships. Of course, we don't have much idea of when we'll be getting that, and we haven't really seen much on it in the last year. Next, Todd was asked about Tier 0 of the survival mechanics, things like thirst, hunger, rest, inebriation, hygiene, and temperature. These are things they've been working on for a little while, and we've seen some of it start to enter the game, but if you look at the lovely roadmap, you'll see that the initial implementation won't come until Alpha 3.8 later this year. And a final question was about the old roadmap and a feature called Downed State which was talking about the knockdowns or knockbacks that players could experience in the game. Todd Pappy said they were working on this, and it was expected to roll out soon, but we haven't seen it in-game just yet. Now, while we do have a close quarters combat update slated for later this year, we don't know if it's going to be that knockdown, knockback, knockout, 
knock up sort of close quarter combat we want, except for the knocking up part. Now, moving on to Around the Verse, which admittedly was another short one, we started with a look at the new AI patrols that were taking place at the Correa station. I went to go check the place out, and a year later there's actually nobody there. I believe the AI patrols were removed along with some other AI assets to take some of the load off of the servers until server-side OCS is implemented later this year. We then talked with Kirk Tomei about the turret gameplay that was developing. And while it wasn't great at the time, turret gameplay has made great strides in the last year. Gimbaled weapons and turrets are much more fun to use, and I enjoy them much more in Alpha 3.6 than I did in Alpha 3.2. There was an update on the shop kiosks and the way that item images would be ported in, and it looks pretty good in 3.6. However, looking at what they had planned for the PMA and VMA app at the time, there's a bit of a disconnect with the current app which explains why they showed just the picture instead of the working app like the shop kiosk. As you can see, not only are item pictures missing, but the statistics over here on the side aren't actually in the app yet, which is a bit disappointing a year later. Then, some of the more atmospheric details that were being added to the Hurston Habs were shown off, and I gotta say, I love this! Give me more! What we have right now is okay, but it's not quite at that level. So CIG, please do us a solid in the future when it comes to Habs. They also showed a sneak peek at the storytelling details that were being added in at Hurston, like the dents in these hangar doors, which probably came from them practicing hover mode, let's be real. Anyways, I never noticed this in the game, so I wanted to see what it looked like, traveled over to Hurston, and realized, wait, there are no vertical hangar doors in Hurston, so I went back to Arcorp and looked at the hangar doors and noticed there's only some scratches and grime on these doors. There's, there's no dents. So believe it or not, they never actually put this in the game. Will we get further implementation than what they currently have in there? It will remain a mystery. Next we got to see some shots of the moons that they were working on, and I can say that in the past year since we've seen these shots, we've seen multiple passes on the lighting, the asset distribution, the way that certain textures and biomes on these moons meld together, and they've actually added a few moons as well. So they have made great additions to the moons, I mean they are beautiful, and they've added various points of interest, they've been doing a good job on keeping the moons updated in the last year, and that's something that I'm actually really happy with. We finally got brief discussion on the distance between Hurston and Crusader, and balancing that distance based on fun and on the scale of the game. Now, that's something that didn't change with the distance to Arcorp, and it has rubbed people the wrong way. However, it's important to remember that as development of the game goes on, they plan on making these planets the center of missions and commerce. These are not places that you will be going back and forth in one game session. It is planned for players to pick a planet, or a sector, and generally stick to that area unless they want to go and quantum jump somewhere else. Now, they also are working on improvements to make quantum travel less monotonous, which we haven't seen yet, but the rest stops are one thing that we've seen in the last year that are supposed to help with that, and the interdiction seem to be the beginning of missions that take place in between these planetary sectors, so we do see that they're trying to work towards having more to do in between these planets, but as of right now, the long quantum times are still a drag, and we're still looking for them to make some changes to that, which they have hinted at. Now, this week's episode of Reverse the Verse included an episode of Ship Shape because, well, they were trying something different. We were trying something different. They were trying something different. And we got a lot of good updates about some of the ships that were coming along. First, we got to hear about the 300 rework reaching the white box phase, along with the initial designs of the Banu Defender and the 890 Jump. Now, we've seen the 300i rework in the game, and people are liking it. It entered the game with a 3.5 update, along with a new customization system. But, the Banu Defender has been pushed back through several different updates. It has a new design language, it's using different materials and different methods of construction than other ships, as this is the first ship of a new species. And while it is a small ship, it's taken a lot of work, so right now it's currently slated to enter the game with 3.7. Hold your breath. 
The 890 Jump, meanwhile, was initially due in 3.5 and was pushed back to 3.6. Well, now we've seen another slight delay and it's pushed back to 3.6.1. So, after about a year, we're seeing the 890 Jump, and mm, a year and three months, we're seeing the Banner Defender. I would say right now, for priority ships at least, we're still seeing about a year in the ship pipeline, going from white box to in-game. And there are still plenty of ships that many would consider important that haven't quite reached the white box phase yet. We also got a brief update on the Freelancer variants, which were getting a step ahead and starting in the gray box phase, due to there already being a chassis available in the game. These ships were delivered to us in Alpha 3.4, and people have enjoyed them so far. We got a quick update on the F8 Lightning, which was stuck at the final art phase, waiting for additional resources to free up. Uh, no significant news on that, but it was included in the Ship Expo last November. And we got a quick update on the starter ship, the Mustang, which was being reworked and ready to be implemented into the game in Alpha 3.3 right alongside the Hammerhead, which was in the technical disciplines, getting ready to get implemented in 3.3 as well. Both of these ships met their deadlines. As did the 600i Touring variant, which was waiting for tech setup resources to free up, and was implemented into the game with the Freelancer variants in 3.4. Now on to the big announcement of the week, the Robert Space Industries Apollo. It's a mid-sized medical ship, pretty good looking, and it was announced with quite a few details already fleshed out in the concept. I thought this would be a great platform to test the medical gameplay on, however, looking at the roadmap, the Cutlass Red seems to already be coming up in the next couple of patches, so I imagine that's the way they're going to go with it, which makes more sense. Now those of you who know me, know that I'm an explorer at heart. I love the look of this ship, but it looks like it is purely medical gameplay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find an excuse to get on this ship for any extended amount of time, but I'm hoping so. Either way, it kind of bums me out that there's no explorer variant. What also bums me out is that we have not heard a peep about this ship in the last year. We haven't heard anything, we have gotten no hints. Maybe we'll start to hear more once the medical gameplay is in the game, but this ship is on the back burner, that's for sure. So, nothing on the Apollo yet, sorry to say it. And that's just gonna about do it for episode 3. As I said, I'm switching to a weekly show so you guys can expect the next episode to come up next week. I want to keep these around 10 to 13 minutes long for you guys, not so long that you're twiddling your thumbs, but just long enough to keep that good information coming to you and keep it looking good and sounding good. As always, I'd like to thank all of you for joining me on this journey. I've been having a ton of fun doing this. Next week, we're going to be going over Todd Pappy Talks Part 2. We're going to be looking at scramble races and the ship shape pipeline. So keep that feedback coming to me, and I'm going to keep the information coming to you. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, there's also piss animations next week, so you don't want to miss that. <laughs>